Prima Media's Mining Weekly is interviewing Mike Fraser, the CEO of Sharat Gold Holdings, a London aim quoted mining company that is active in the Kyrgyz Republic. Mike, when we spoke last, a dispute was underway between the Kyrgyz Republic and the Canada-based gold mining company, Sentera Gold. What is the latest on what was described at the time as a quasi-nationalization dispute? Absolutely right. I think that uh, dispute between uh, the Kyrgyz Republic and Sentera was, an, was a slow burn issue, been around for, for many, many years. Uh, and I think the, the government just kind of got to a point where it said they needed to, to find a resolution to this. So after some time, the takeover of the mine was announced uh, around 12 months ago. Uh, and in the last 12 months, the Kyrgyz Republic and Sentera have been trying to, to find a pathway for resolution. Um, this was announced on the 4th of April. Um, so a resolution to that dispute was announced whereby the Kyrgyz Republic would take over the uh, long-term operation and ownership of the Kumtul Mine in exchange for some of the shares that they held at the corporate level in Sentera. Um, that dispute really is an important step forward for us. Uh, and many of our financing partners were certainly waiting for that resolution to be announced uh, before they would re-engage on the funding and, and uh, financing of our projects in Kyrgyzstan. So we were quite excited about it. And uh, we think that that's an important step forward for reopening uh, the investability of, of Kyrgyzstan. And which finance institutions have lifted their head again in the Kyrgyz Republic since the resolution of that dispute? Look, I think it's early days yet. So, you know, I'm not going to talk specific names. You know, we've got a number of our partners that we've been talking to right throughout this period of the dispute. Uh, and they continue to be very interested and excited about our story uh, and the projects that we have in the Kyrgyz Republic and are very open to, to, to supporting us. Obviously, we also talk to the multilaterals, in particular um, agencies like the EBRD, who are very active in Central Asia. And they are also very interested in, in being part of, of the investability and re-engaging and in investing in the mining sector in, in Kyrgyz Republic. So from that point of view, um, you know, we've made a, a statement in our results that we just released that we do expect us to, ourselves to complete the financing of Tulkabash in the second half of um, this calendar year, uh, which would give us then the ability to have first gold by, you know, probably back end of 2024, early 2025, uh, which is perfectly aligned to, you know, our overall growth plans for uh, Charat. So that uh, sounds positive, then you must have your funding in place for this open cost Tulkabash project. Yes, we still need to close all of that out. Um, and that's our commitment to get that financing completed for the full project by the end of 2022. Um, that Tulkabash project will give us around 95 to 100,000 ounces of gold equivalent for between five and 10 years. And that is the precursor project um, for the main project that we're wanting to develop, which is Kizzeltash. Now, Kizzeltash is really the exciting opportunity for Sharak. This is a very long life, around 5.3 million ounces gold equivalent um, that sits below the Tulkabash project. And this will give us uh, around 300,000 ounces of gold equivalent for over 20 years of life. Uh, and that's the real prize for us. So we are quite excited about getting Tulkabash off the ground because the development of that project gives us really access to the much larger opportunity in Kizeltash. Sharat is currently a single gold mine operation producing about 63,000 ounces of gold in 2021, some of it from third-party material. You plan to turn the company into a mid-tier gold miner. Is that all part of your target at 450,000 ounces of gold at an all-in sustaining cost of what sounds pretty low, $900 an ounce? Yeah, and I think this is what's quite exciting about this, uh, you know, certainly part of the, the areas that we're operating in and the resource that we do have in place. Uh, these will be very low cost and very competitive ounces to add to, to our portfolio. Um, in terms of strategy, you know, right now we've got the single operating mine, polymetallic mine, which is the Kapan mine in, in Armenia. 
Um, we've got the two projects in, in Kyrgyzstan. And really just those three, the two projects in that one operation takes us to the 450,000 ounces by 2027. Uh, in terms of strategy, though, um, I do believe that we have the capability, the experience and the capacity um, to add more ounces to this portfolio. And certainly I believe that the sector is, is quite ripe for consolidation, you know, at this size of the sector. Uh, and we would like to be part of that. And so we think that through uh, corporate activity and also potentially adding uh, further resource into the portfolio, we can even grow that position. But we think that that will, that will keep us certainly busy and, and we'll be able to really unlock the value uh, of the share price because the share price, we believe, is trading at a very big discount to its underlying asset value. And progressing the projects as we've we've set out uh, will certainly enable us to to create value for our shareholders and and all of our stakeholders. And in the twelve months of twenty twenty one, Sharat lifted its EBITDA by quite a big percentage forty five percent, reported cash of eleven point one million, and halved its debt. What is Sharat guiding for twenty twenty two? So as you can appreciate, you know, a large part of our leverage comes through commodity prices and also our ability to put additional third party or as you, as you called out, through our Kapan mill. Uh, that mill is, is certainly not been operating at full capacity. Last year, we certainly benefited from uh, additional third party or processing. And this year, we will push that, that very hard. So our guidance this year is between 55 and 60,000 ounces of gold equivalent. Um, but again, you know, we, we were able to exceed it in, in the prior year. And if we are able to continue to fill the mill, that should be tested at the, at the top end of that range. We're quite comfortable with where we're at. And obviously, with gold prices being supportive, um, we should see another strong year from a, an earnings perspective as well. And will Sharat remain a gold-only mining company or could base metals be a potential diversification? I've been with the company three months now. Um, the first three months has really been, you know, evaluating our capability in the business, uh, looking at where our strengths and weaknesses are, where the opportunities sat for us. And, and whilst Sharat was set up as a former Soviet Union consolidation player and a developer of assets in that region, um, I certainly think there's an opportunity for us to pivot into other regions within a, a time zone. You know, I talk about the time zone of probably plus four to six hours GMT, uh, and that gives us a fairly big blanket of opportunity to access projects. And secondly, I do think that if you look at our operation at Kapan, it's a polymetallic mine. Um, we produce a very interesting combination of gold, silver, zinc, and I think we've got a really good opportunity to leverage some of that experience. So if the right industrial commodity and industrial metal comes up, you know, be it copper, zinc, uh, certainly we would be open for those opportunities as well. And the pictures I've seen indicate that you operate in quite a nice environment there, which uh, deserves to be well protected. What is Sharat doing about protecting that environment as well as tackling its own scope one and two emissions. I won't talk about scope three because it's outside of your control, but if you want to refer to that, you can. <laughs> yeah, you know, certainly from an environmental uh, commitment, I can absolutely say that we are committed to very high standards of environmental performance. Um, I think the one nice thing about um, where we are listed, and certainly our ambition as we grow is to kind of step up onto the main board of, of the LSE, you know, that will bring its own level of commitments and obligations to, to be a good citizen and a high-performing, sustainable miner. Um, and, and certainly all of our commitments of those have the highest integrity. This region that you're seeing behind me is, the, you know, the one thing about it, it's a very low inhabited region. You know, there's, there's, there's no people in there. It's a dry riverbed. So we are quite fortunate that the environmental requirements to meet those international standards aren't, you know, as high as maybe in, in, uh, in other jurisdictions uh, and other locations. But having said that, you know, we will continue to meet those high standards of environmental commitment. Um, the one opportunity that is in front of us, as you rightly call out, are our, particularly our scope one emissions. 
The Tulkabash project initially is, is going to be using diesel generators just because of where we are um, for the support of our processing facilities. But what is really nice about uh, the Kyrgyz Republic is there's a very high amount of hydroelectric opportunities. So one of the opportunities that we've been talking to the multilaterals are is participating in a project to either produce our own hydroelectric requirements or additionally connect to, to the grid, uh, which is around uh, 20 kilometers away, which will allow us to have uh, clean power into this facility. So, so we certainly believe by the time we get to Kizeltash project, that, that will be resolved and we will be able to have a very uh, green and sustainable production out of, out of uh, the Kyrgyz Republic. And these days, the letters ESG are huge across these mining companies. What are you doing about assisting the local community? Yeah, and, and look, that's the one thing I can say, uh, Martin, there's been a huge amount of impact already um, through the existence of Sharat in the Chatkal Valley. Um, you know, there's been very little economic activity there. Most of the people have been nomadic herders. We've already created, um, you know, a couple of hundred jobs, people already working, building on our campsites. So we've already had a fairly material economic impact in this region. Uh, we continue to provide investment in upgrading of schools, health facilities, and social activities in the region. Um, but we believe that the big value is going to come through the development of the economic activity by having, you know, one and eventually two operating uh, mines in that valley, which will create a, a significant amount of economic upliftment to these communities in that region. I can absolutely say with confidence that Sharat today is doing an outstanding job of providing uh, upliftment and opportunities for the community to develop cohesion and uh, a better life for themselves. What if we had to crystallize everything? What is the main message? I think Sharat for many people has been off the radar. It's it's a very small company today within the AIM sector. I do believe that there is, is a dearth of uh, real quality mid-tier gold miners uh, that are growing, that have the opportunity to deliver the growth that Sharad has got in its portfolio. And, uh, you know, the nice thing about it is it's a company that's fairly uh, undervalued in, in, in our opinion. And uh, for those that stay the journey with us, we believe that Sharad will be a good place to, to be. So, um, if we can deliver on our growth ambitions, uh, this should be a, a good story. And, and hopefully for people who don't know us, uh, we'll start following us. That was Creamer Media's Mining Weekly, speaking to Mike Fraser, the CEO of Sharat Gold Holdings.